What's up guys, it's Jake here in the Holland Built Shop, powered by Send Cut Send. Today, we're gonna to be installing this collapsible steering column and steering wheel on the Busa build. Let's get into it. This is a collapsible steering column that you can buy at most Speedway shops. The reason why you wanna have a collapsible steering in the car is that when you have a front end impact, heaven forbid we actually crash this thing right away, that front end impact can actually transfer the steering column back towards the driver. So if this was a solid shaft and we have it aiming at the driver, it can actually come into the driver's chest. Um, this is pretty common. We're gonna today just mount on the driver's side. The other side's gonna have an electrical power assist installed later on in the build once we have the headers in. Today, we're just gonna get this in the car on the driver's side. So let's take it over to the car. So I'm in the car now. Um, the next step is we're just gonna get the steering column kind of in front of me. We'll extend this out. Uh, it's gonna run just to the side of this brake, metal, uh, brake pedal mount that we did earlier in the build. And the mount that I'm concerned with today is gonna be coming off this bar. We're gonna kind of tie into it. That mounts to this heim. So we're just gonna get up here, get a feel for it. I like my steering wheels pretty close to my race cars. Uh, we have some space here, uh, mostly because I'm gonna be running a hand clutch on this eventually since it's a motorcycle build. And once we like it right there, go ahead and let's take out the tape measure and get a measurement on that. So we got those measurements. We kind of know where the high needs to be in relation to that front bar. I did that quick measurement to kind of know the width in which we're gonna have a little pie slice that comes back into that heim. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. I think we're gonna have that bar. We have the heim. I think I'm just gonna do a quick little triangle out to that heim that ties into the center of our bar. And then I'm just gonna do a quick bend that wraps around and up on both sides. So this bend right here, um, I'm gonna keep just a little bit less than 90 degrees. I think that'll help a little bit with the stability in the car and we're gonna let Sen Cut Sen do those brakes and stuff for us. I wanna talk a little bit about bending out with it today. So let's hop to the office, get this drawn up, and then we'll talk about the design some more. All right, so we took our measurements that we just took from the car. The two most important measurements being that distance from the center line of that roll cage mount back to that heim, and then also the width in which we can kind of make that web bracket come back in. We're gonna transfer those to the CAD now. So I went and poured myself some whiskey as always and let's do some drawing here. So let's start with the sketch. So the main point is that we want that time. We're gonna call that as a three quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna draw our line off of a center line and out. Let's make these construction. This one is not. We wanted that bracket to be four and a half inches wide, or sorry, uh, nine inches wide, four and a half inches in the center line. So we're gonna make that four and a half. And let's give ourselves a little bit of slack here. And we'll draw a line here. And we're just gonna mirror this over here in a second. So, add in. Probably do an inch and three quarter will be enough neat around there. We'll do the same thing here. And lastly, it was nine and seven eighths was our measurement from the center of the heim up to this point here, which is the center of that roll cage mount. So we're gonna put that in there. And a quick mirror. And we are done with the main bracket. Quick mirror. Um, so now that we're done with that sketch, we're gonna go ahead and create a sheet metal bracket. So in the software that I'm using, um, if you use sheet metal, you can create bends off that sheet metal. And since we're gonna be wanting this to be a bent part later on, I'm gonna be forward thinking and using sheet metal as my extrusion process. So if we come back here, let's go into the sheet metal side of things. So up here in the ribbon, we're gonna cut sheet metal and we wanna create a flange. 
we can select our body here. What this does is it allows us to do two different thicknesses. So I can either have it above or below. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I want my steel to be in inches. So that's what we're gonna be using and click OK. So this is kind of the main bracket. And um, we're gonna come in here and make sure that my steel, so we can come to modify sheet metal rules. Steel is in here. And so we're gonna be using 104 thousandths thick. So I'm gonna change that to 104. This K factor, um, K factor is something that you has to do with the stretch. I'm gonna talk about that here in a little bit, but mostly it's just the stretch and stuff of that. If you go onto Senkut Sen's website, you can see some um, values for that and um, or close. So now that we have those set, um, what we can do is we can actually just click in here. We can start bending these down. We can create a little bit. What I don't want to do is I want them to be opened up. The reason why I don't want it to be 90 degrees is that I get a little bit of racking at 90 degrees. If I open them up and I weld them in, there's gonna be a little bit more um, stability with the side to side. At the end, this um, flange that comes out, I'm gonna be tying that into the roll cage using some like small, like one inch tubing uh, that gets tied in at the end, but that'll be further on in the build after I get the doors on it and a lot more interior stuff done. I'll know where I can place those. So that being said right now, I'm just gonna assume that this is gonna be kind of sticking out into no man's land. And so I want it to be as stiff as possible. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time now kind of finalizing this design and adding some um, clearance holes and a little bit of shape and form um, just because I want to have a little style to it. And when I get done, I'll come back to you guys. I'll show you what I came up with and we'll get to it. Finalize this design a little bit further. I added some clearance holes. What I want to do now is double check that this design is exactly where I want it. Most importantly, from that center of that heim to that center of that tubing, like I've said before, we're going to go ahead and create a DXF take this to that CO2 laser that I got in my shop, cut it out in some wood, bolt it on physically to it, double check in the car that it's good within reason, and uh, then we'll add all the bending features that I'm gonna do, cut that through slot, and then we'll set it to sand cuts in. All right, we're fresh off the CO2. I got my template in here that we just worked on inside. What we're gonna be looking for right now is that I wanna see this orientation of the center of this heim to the center of this tube when the steering wheel feels comfortable for me. So I'm just gonna hold this steering wheel up. Like I said, what we're trying to do right now is it's gonna bend stuff, but I just want it to be kind of centered here on the pipe and in a comfortable spot for me to hold the steering wheel. It's most likely gonna be a little bit higher like this. That feels great to me. One last thing to remember is that this is a collapsible steering column. These two collars here, they can be loosened up and this heim can slide back and forth, as well as that being collapsible, this entire steering assembly can move back and forth. So if we're within about an inch right now, we're really safe. I'm really happy with this. Let's go back to the CAD. We're gonna add these bends. We're gonna go over some bending um, things that I like to do. And we're gonna send it off to Send Cut Send, get the parts cut, bent, We'll get this thing installed. So now that we checked that dimension from that heim to the center of the tubing, made sure everything was gonna fit left and right, I went ahead and added all the bends into this part. And so um, you can see here, I didn't quite bend it all the way to 90. I wanna leave them flared out a little bit. I think that'll add a little bit of stability to the end design. And then lastly is, is that I have this little cut, little wedge design, cause I don't want it to be all big and fat kind of coming into the chassis. The problem with that is, is that when you end up having a tapered edge like that, with respect to the bend line, you have to add something that is parallel to your bend line or send cut send can't bend it. And so um, what I ended up doing is I just tabbed in a little tiny flat here. I mean, this is like only a half an inch wide anyway. That is gonna allow them to put this up against the stop in their CNC brake and then allow them to do a nice clean brake. Uh, lastly is I have just a quick, um, I, I, I cope the tubing into the side of this design so it nice and fits, it fits nice and slug, snug over the whole entire side of the tube um, with the center line being where I wanted it. 
and um, that's it. So the last thing we're gonna do is um, in Fusion 360 or um, a lot of the CAD softwares when you do uh, um, a, a sheet metal design like this, you can create a flat pattern. So if we come in here, create that fat, flat pattern, you'll end up seeing this entire thing get flattened out. So now we can see here it's a nice flat bend. This is how this, um, the laser is gonna see it and cut it out. Um, the great thing about um, a lot of the CAD softwares, including Senka Sen, is that in here, there's a DXF export. What that allows us to do is export it and it includes these split lines that are for the bending. Um, so this will end up getting cut out with that parallel line to the split line. The split lines will be there. So when you put them into Senka Sen, you can select that split line that is your bend angle, and then just all you have to do is input whether you want it up or down and what angle you want it. So we're gonna want these down at 75 degrees because I'm gonna hold off 15 degrees so they're a little flared out. And we'll make sure that they're both down at 15 degrees. This thing's gonna turn out exactly like we want it. So let's go ahead, we'll create these DXFs, let's send them to Send Cut Send. When we get the parts, I'll get back to you. So Mailman came, we got our Send Cut Send parts. Let's open them up. I ordered some other stuff. So there's gonna be lots of parts in here. Today we're only focused on, we're focused on our uh, steering column here. It's always a good day. All right, Get that out of the way. So you guys can see here, I have all of the other parts to do my other swing arm mount on the other side. We're gonna be doing suspension here soon, but this is the part that we're looking for. So let's open this up. As you can tell, their shipping is on point. You have no reason to worry about any of your bent stuff getting damaged and shipping. Everything is nice and uh, sealed up and protected. So much so, sometimes it's even hard to get out. All right, looking good. So remember, since we uh, need a parallel line in order to bend, I added all these little tabs in here in this little straight line. This straight line right here, to that, we're gonna cut this off, get it all polished back up before we get it in the car, but exactly what we ordered. Before we get into this build, I wanna talk a little bit about how I approach my bending when it comes to CNC brakes and working with Sen Cut Sen. Uh, the first being is that I have a hole in this part that's next to a bend. This part, I have all the room in the world, it's all right. But as these type of holes approach that corner, the closer you get, you can actually distort the hole. And if it's a tap hole or even a through hole for a bolt, it can make it so that you don't get the proper fit there. The rule of thumb that I use and what Senka Sen uses is about a half an inch. As long as you have a half an inch of clearance between that hole and that bend, you're in the clear, you have nothing to worry about. If you're gonna be closer than that, they have material spec charts on their website. I refer to those a lot. They help me um, decide on if I'm gonna be uh, doing something risky or I'll just contact their support team and make sure that it's not something that I need to worry about. Uh, next is on this part, we didn't quite do a 90 degree bend. I left them open a little bit more for some stability, but they do do 90, to bend, 90 degree bends on all of the materials that they um, offer bending on. They can go up to 130 degrees, so an acute bend on some materials. Again, I just checked the material spec sheet, sheets that are on their website. Um, it's super clear. I normally get everything I need to do out of that. Again, on this one right here, my holes on this one, pretty close to the bend angle, but on their sheets, said I was in the clear and everything is good. I both go right through it. Lastly, is I wanna talk about K-Factor. If you're gonna be doing bending, and especially bending that has other tabs and slots and stuff that are gonna be interchanging with the bends, uh, K-Factor is super important. So I want to use this little handy dandy note board again and um, just talk about what K-Factor is. 
So if we have a sheet that is being bent, when we when we have we have a neutral line that is actually the center of the part, like this. Right here in the middle of your bend, you have thinning. This gets nice and thin. That shifts that center line in towards the center and comes back out. We'll actually draw it a little bit thinner there. What K factor is, is it's a ratio between, we'll call this D1, and the overall thickness of the part. We'll call that T. So D1 over T is the K factor. And the reason why you need to know what the K factor is, is that that stretching and that thinning changes the displacement in the part. It actually elongates that part. The good thing is, is that you guys don't have to actually know what K factor is for the specific part that you're gonna be doing because it's already on the website underneath those material spec sheets. So when you're in your CAD and you're gonna do a sheet metal bend, I go to their spec sheets, I use the K factor that they're telling me to, and I put that into my CAD software underneath the K factor. So when you're doing sheet metal, you can set it all up. Uh, and when I do that, I always get really good bends um, that right here I got a nice 90 degree bend and I got tab and slots on two different parts. This thing's not even welded up right now and it's completely, um, that's just a little PSA for today on bending. So we're getting back into the build now. We're gonna cut these tabs off, get this thing true back up to my design and then we'll start fitting it into the car. Back in the car, we have the new bracket uh, on the Heim, bolted on there uh, nice and loosely. I do have these two marks right here. Those are gonna be kind of the left to right um, as I'm like holding this thing up, making sure everything's centered. So we have a nice engagement as those kind of come up and tuck in. So come back and get this thing. Now we're just worried about this height. So I can essentially rack this thing at a couple different angles right now. So I'm just gonna get in the height that I like. We're gonna take a measurement to the bottom from this little piece of wood that I have on the floorboard up to the bottom of the heim. I'll probably just shove a box or something in there to hold it at the right height that I want right now. We'll clamp this thing, pull it in there, and I'll throw a couple tacks in it with the welder. Do one last final check before we weld it in. Everything's looking really good. Sank got Sen did their job one more time for me. That's it. I'm really stoked with how this turned out. It's another successful build here in the Holland Built Shop with uh, Seca Sen's help. Don't forget those rules that I talked about with the bending on your guys' builds. I wanna make sure everything's successful there. If you do have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to support at SenCutSen.com. That's it for this build. Stay tuned for the next one.